Hey guys, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So is PHP V new hot language in 2025? I'm recording this in November 2024, so I'm looking forward. So is it the new hot language? And if so, why? PHP is the top server-side programming language, and it has been for many years. It's more popular than Java, it's more popular than JavaScript for the server side, more popular than C Sharp, more popular than Python, more popular than Ruby. It simply is. I'm not saying it's the best necessarily overall. Well, personally, I have to say, having used many of these languages for server side, I choose PHP. I think it is the best overall for server side web application development, partly because that's what it was designed for from inception. Yeah, imagine that, a language, a technology that was designed to do one thing, in this case, server-side software development. Imagine a language that was designed to do one thing is actually the best at it. What makes it the best though? What makes a language the best at anything? Well, I'm looking at overall productivity. Yes, there are certain areas where JavaScript is superior, certain areas where Python is superior, no areas where Ruby is superior. But overall, when you look at the whole thing, when you look at ease of deployment, uh, stability, speed, uh, productivity, ecosystem, PHP, I don't think it can be beat. Like, I challenge anybody, if you disagree with me, show me below, tell me below where PHP doesn't rank highly, highly in any of the major categories. So some people might say, how about security? How about security? The problem with the whole security argument vis-a-vis -vis PHP, when people say PHP is not secure, it's based on what PHP was 15 years ago. It's very strange. Well, it's not strange. If you understand anything about the lizard brain psychology, once we've joined a camp, once we've decided that this language sucks and this language is the best, it's very difficult for us as human species, as humans, to change that opinion because we're emotionally invested in that opinion. Trust me, I'm a student of psychology. That was my major in university. I'm not a psychologist, but I'm a student of it. And I can tell you, our opinions are largely based on associations, emotionality as opposed to logic and reason. They have shown in the studies that we come to an emotional conclusion about something a lot of times, and then we invent the logical reason or reasoning for that conclusion. Although the conclusion was derived emotionally, which often means based on just raw association and not very factual based anyhow. So went off on a little tangent there. Anyway, PHP, uh, it's not insecure. It used to be. That, that is the irony, actually. The fact that it was insecure, that is why it became so popular in the first place. You see, in the early days of the web where I was around back in the early 90s, a lot of designers, graphic designer types, were jumping into web design. And this eventually slowly developed into web apps. Started off with the famous guest book. Everybody had to have a guest book on their site. And then we needed basic e-commerce implementation, so on and so forth. So a lot of people involved in web design and development came from a design background, not a computer science background. So the uh, PHP founder, who was a programmer, really, well, he was a programmer, he saw this demand. He made PHP really easy and approachable. Now, the cost of doing that, it was open. It was vulnerable. So yes, early PHP was very vulnerable. Was, the doors are wide open, easy to exploit. But again, years and years and years and years and years ago, they started closing all these holes. They started closing all these holes. But at the same time, the legacy of easy to uh, deploy, easy to learn, uh, easy to ramp up PHP was still there at the same time. So their problem, PHP's problem initially was that it was very vulnerable and it was um, kind of a messy language. There's inconsistencies in there. Of course, 
anybody who knows JavaScript knows that we got some JavaScript inconsistencies as well. Anyhow, so PHP's problem was those two things, security, inconsistencies in the language. That's a long time ago, man. That's a long, long time ago. As I've said in other videos, since PHP, I say maybe 5.6, those problems are largely gone. Those problems are largely gone. Now we're at PHP 8, as I'm recording this video in November, November 1st, 2024. PHP 8 is an enterprise ready level language. What does that mean? That means it could build anything. That means it's got the uh, constructs and facilities built into the core language that allows it to compete with the c sharpnets the Javas, certainly the Python Django, Express Node, very capable. Again, I'm not saying that it does everything better than everything else. I'm just saying that overall, I believe, my personal opinion is that overall, if you're starting a new app, you're building a new app, whether it's an MVC, not an MVC, MVP, Minimum Viable Product, to do SaaS startup, you want to build a small e-commerce implementation, you want to implement uh, anything new, anything nimble, you're going to do with PHP for sure, for sure. So what about PHP salaries? A lot of people say PHP salaries are less. Ah. So if you look at the jobs out there, yes, you will see like, for example, PHP Laravel. Laravel is the predominant PHP framework. So you see PHP Laravel jobs, you see entry level salaries will be listed less than, let's say, C sharp.net jobs. There are reasons for that. You can get a PHP Laravel job much more easily without having a degree. Whereas C-sharp.net jobs, Java jobs, they are typically at larger organizations, enterprise, the so-called enterprise, where they, because of HR departments, more difficult to get those jobs without, an, uh, without a degree. That being said, that's changing now. I've talked about this at length. Apple, IBM, and several other companies have realized, Google, that uh, the competency of software developers have very little to do with whether or not you have a degree. That being said, so you see in the PHP Laravel world, the PHP world, you see initial salaries. Underline that initial might be less, but there's a lot of jobs there. And the one thing you have to understand in the software development game, your pay has much less to do with what language you use and has much more to do with your level of skill and experience. So if you look out two, three, four years into it, the PHP Laravel developer will be making the same money as the Java developer, as the C-sharp developer. It's just a question of experience. Now, if you want the broadest opportunity, it's going to be PHP world 100%. So why in the PHP world do you find the most opportunity to get a job as a developer? Well, because PHP is broad, very broad in terms of uh, jobs. PHP is used in big business, small business, medium-sized business, your local coffee shop or auto mechanic who needs an e-commerce site, PHP, uh, medium-sized companies, PHP, startups, PHP. Now, in the enterprise, big banks, I don't know, big uh, pharmaceuticals, they're going to be using c sharpnet they're going to be using Java, uh, Spring Boot, for sure, much more likely. That being said, you find PHP used in very large organizations as well including Facebook, of course, right? The core of their engine is built with PHP. It's very scalable. That brings me to another myth out there that somehow scaling or scalability of a language, if you will, the, that type of performance is a major factor in choosing the language. It is not. It is not. Why isn't it important? Because most of the sites, most of the projects you ever be working on will never come close to needing that hyper bandwidth and throughput that you need for sites like a Facebook or a Google site or something. It's just, it's not the case. It's not the case. Yes, you have to be mindful of how scalable your app is, how much, how much load it can handle. In terms of importance, it's way down here, way down here. If your project is getting so successful that you have to worry about scale, then you're going to have the resources to be able to do what you need to do to get up to speed. Not to say that PHP couldn't handle, it can. My own SaaS Studio Web, which is an educational platform, which we developed from scratch, we've had millions of students on it, right? And the bottlenecks we faced with it, 
was not the architecture, it was not the fact we were on PHP. The bottlenecks, like 99% of bottlenecks when it comes to web apps, was with the database. And in fact, for me, the bottleneck had something to do with just somebody not indexing a data, not indexing a table properly. Table indexes are the key to, <laughs> to scalability of your app. I wouldn't be worried about scalability. Get that out of your head. It's not something to consider. Really, it's really not that important. Ease of use, stability, easy deployments, uh, cost of hosting, that's what matters. Frankly, cost of hosting is not that important, now that I think about it, now that I thought long about it. It's really not that important because today, regardless of the language, whether it be PHP, Python, JavaScript, Ruby, uh, Java, .NET, the hosting is so unimportant. Why? Because hosting is so powerful today that the, to be worried about the hosting is, is, it's so rare. Like I would not go with token-based hosting. I wouldn't go with uh, an Azure or AWS now, especially if you're starting out something, because uh, you could get hit. If you have major traffic all of a sudden, you can get hit. Whereas if you just go with uh, your typical unlimited shared hosting or unlimited private VPS for 100 bucks a month, you're fine, you won't have to do it. Remember, hosting computers now, you know, server computers rather, are so powerful these days that you know, many publicly traded uh, companies had their websites on, on uh, servers 10, 15 years ago, and the server computers were weaker than my iPhone 12. Like my iPhone 12 has more power, uh, faster CPUs, faster RAM, better RAM, than some of the biggest servers 15 years ago, if not the biggest servers. And I had a server back in the 90s, and it was a, it was a dedicated server, Windows NT4, in the, in the server room, which was my closet, and uh, ISDN line, which is uh, you know, the first high-speed internet you could get, commercial internet. And I was hosting uh, companies that were VC funded, hosting their sites, never a problem. And that server is like a wimp compared to my iPhone 12. So yeah, scale and traffic and all that, that's just such a, too much emphasis on that, too much emphasis on that these days. Not important, you probably never even come close to hitting limits. I think PHP is the best solution for most projects, not for all, but for most. And I'm seeing more and more and more people are starting to recognize that PHP development, monolith development with frameworks like Laravel, very powerful, very capable, very stable, pleasant to work with, easy to configure, easy to deploy. What else do you want? I'm Uncle Steph. I mentor people in software development. I have people who are total beginners in my program. I have people who have 15 years experience in my program and everybody in between. I teach the foundations of software development. I get into the nitty gritty about things with my interactive platform. I'm like, I might be the only, I don't know, I haven't looked at them all, but I might be the only YouTube developer uh, teacher who actually developed his own platform. I saw that the other platforms were fine for generalized learning, but when you're teaching software development, teaching coding, it's a very particular thing. And because it's a very particular thing, you need very particular capabilities in your training platform. So that's what I have. We developed it. Wasn't all out of my mind. I worked with a whole bunch of different schools and teachers and we've refined it over the years. So it's quite effective. Anyway, I have my solo standalone courses. I have my mentoring program. If you want the full Uncle Steph experience. And that's it. If you disagree with anything I say in this video, uh, please comment below. Let's have a discussion. I don't mind. If I, I am challenged and proven wrong, that's fantastic because that means I've learned something. Uh, so if you have any disagreements with what I've said in this video, please comment below. No problem. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like my videos, give me two thumbs down to show how much you hate me. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like my long hair. Give me two thumbs down if you hate my short hair. That doesn't make any sense. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.